but let me say this is Sanchez. Um, what I think there are seven chakras um, within the body system. But I think what um, what the ancient man understood, and just like the people in the Bible understood as well, is that um, your different organs they vibrate at different tunes and vibration, and what you consume and what you did uh, throughout your day to day. All these things played a part within those different organs within your body, and the best way to keep those organs vibrating and on a in synchrony is to be in tune with not only with yourself but um the principles and the universal laws that the most high established within the earth and so when we speak on seven chakras it's just like as above so below um just because the most high said he sit it above the circumference it's not the circle of the earth it's the circumference of the earth meaning the whole earth he's not saying he's just sitting right on top of the earth you know what i mean looking right at it no there are seven heavens uh, above the earth um one we would call with the birds flying in the firmament and then space and then so as and further up the net according to the scriptures. Yeah, so those, I just those, put that down. Those seven heavens are the seven seals that got to be broken in order for God to arrive on earth. Let's pass it back to the Hebrew brother. This ain't a debate. Yeah. This is just a exchange of information, man. Right. So uh, to respond to the brother who was just speaking, um, yeah, I actually meant uh, a circle, not circumference. For example, he used two words. So, for example, in Hebrew, the word for circle is chog, C-H-U-W-G, right? And then the word for circle, or sphere, sorry, or ball, is dur, D-U-W-R. So the ancients knew a dif the difference between circle, which is, a, you know, the flat, 2D looking like uh, plane, versus the sphere. So yeah, I was very specific about it being a flat surface. So this brother's a flat earther. That's what's up. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, created a flat earth. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. No, nah, that's not true, King. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I just wanted to say this because I when, when you heard that when you said that earlier, it just made me think. It's like, no offense, bro, but you do realize y'all make it that much harder for us flat earthers because Y'all, religious flat earthers always tie the proof to flat earth to a book instead of the actual science. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, I would appreciate y'all yeah. kind of stop doing that shit and come you know, more to science with y'all flat earth. You know, you know, you know why? You know why? You know why, man? Because with the with, with what they doing with the flat earth, it leads back to the end of the day that you broke the laws of Yahweh and that's why everything fucked up. When really everything fucked up because the earth flat and ain't telling folks the true nature of our universe and how they manipulate reality and, 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 and the true nature of reality. So the hidden hiding the knowledge and keeping people dumbed down in an ignorant state is the source of all these problems. And so we can't then tell the people that the source of all their problems is they didn't follow some statues and laws in a fucking book. Because I guarantee you, if every fucking human on earth obeyed the orders of God in the Bible, the world won't be a better place. But if every fucking human on earth uh, listened to what their heart was saying and fucking obeyed the natural laws in the universe, the world will, because when they was like that, that's when the world was better. The world didn't get fucked up to religion. Thanks. Sir, um, Sanchez, you're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, 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 let me ask you a quick question, King. Um, you said about the circle, right? Um, how do you get four corners um, on a circle? Yes, I can explain that. I can answer that perfectly. You, you, square. you place allow a circle to within a square. Allow, allow me to explain. Allow me to explain. Okay, so imagine a board that's four, it has four squares, right? And in that board, you put a plate on it that does not expand out of the boundaries of that four square uh, board. It's very simple. Okay. Well, I think uh, the uh, uh, well, what? let me say this. I was going to say this real quick, Sanchez. Um, well, see, when you're dealing with the four corners, that's not four corners, brother. Uh, it's dealing with hey, four corners. Hey, man, corner man, corner. man, watch I mean, this, man. Bottom, front, and back. Uh, uh, hey, check this out, yo. How do you get four corners in a circle? There you go, Madonna. That fucking circle. There you circle. go. Yep, Let's go, exactly. man. Let's go, bro. It. Let's get it, yep. bro. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. This shit is That's easy, beautiful. bro. Like you, like this. Who you think you talking to, man? Let's go. What's your next one, bro?
<laughs> that was beautiful. Well, when we're dealing, with, really when we're dealing with the circumference of the earth, and we're dealing with the my uh, brother, four corners, my um, brother, let's go to I'm the next to... question. I just answer the four corners in a circle. You're gonna take this answer. answer. The... You asked me to produce some, and I did it, man. Like, let's go to the next one now. This is what's happening at the North Pole. You have four all these pots, like the edges of each corner pointed inward. It's a very simple question. Cut an orange open. The energy flowing inward. I would just try to show the brother that's dealing with cardinal points, but uh, somebody, y'all go ahead. That's what we're dealing with, brother. You can't have four corners on a damn basketball, son. I can show you four corners in a circle. You can't show me four corners. You can't show me a damn 90 degree edge anywhere on a basketball. So shut up and let's move on, man. It's called top, bottom, front, and back. Yeah, it's called dumb, stupid, blind, and dumb. Let's go. <laughs> Isn't that what we got? We got the top of the earth, the bottom of the earth, the front of the earth, and the back of the earth. That's what we had. Okay, man, I'm finna get your ass now. You gonna learn to lay good enough, well enough alone. Now watch this. Give me them directions again. We need to identify them with the model up. Let's go. Yeah, it's called uh, top, bottom, front. Okay, now back. wait a minute. When you talk about top, my brother, are we talking about where my mouse is at right here? That's correct. And when All you talk, now region. look, now, now yeah. look. So these people at the top and these people at the bottom, right? Right. These people is up. These people is down, right? That's the bottom. Yep. Okay. Now, wa bottom. now, now, watch this. Now, now, watch what I just did. Everybody, watch this classic dagger. According to the laws of gravity, the energy is pulling downward toward the ground. You just established down as everything below the equator and up as everything above the equator when down and up on a globe should be in and out, my nigga, because all of the energy pulling in toward the core on all directions and expanding outward the same way. See how I killed you, man? Let me show you how what you, what you just did. If all, see, down on a globe ain't below the equator, my done. Down on a globe is a fall inward toward Inside. the core. Damn, dude. Back. Damn. Well, Back. I never used the word. I never used the no, word down. No, brother. No, brother. <laughs> no. Hey, guess what? Let's, let, 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 let's, let's use the word bottom then. When you refer to the bottom of a globe, which you still going to maintain that this is the bottom right here? Let only Madon talk. Come on, Madon. Yeah, that bottom portion. Okay. Um, how much percentage okay, of that okay. bottom? No, no, wait, know, a minute, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Bro, you don't don't give me a lot of access. I hate when y'all do that. Because I want to hurry up and get through talking. And you can make this simple. So you know what I mean here, brother. Be simple. You saying this is the damn bottom. But y'all also saying that they also saying the ground represents the bottom. It's not the ground at the bottom of my feet. See, let me let That's me show let, let me show you what, what's going on. The land so, you on, yeah. Watch this, man. Let me show you what's going on. He's giving you flat earth shit, but he's a globalist, and this knucklehead don't see it. Let me show him. See, on a flat earth and a flat earth spear. The bottom is the great deep, and the top is the waters above. On a globe, you can't have a bottom and top like that. Your bottom got to be toward, if I say, man, we going into the bottom of the earth, the bottom, the, bo the, the bowels of it. The what, see, top would be sky, bottom would be ground. That would be in and out, which is what they call outer space, but what is inner space? See what I'm saying? That's when you enter the Earth atmosphere. Where is the edge of outer and inner Whoa. space? Now, check this out, bro, because I ain't done yet. You just need to listen, brother. On a globe, you can't have the bottom and top the way you just described, bro, and still maintain that things fall toward the center of a core. That would represent your bottom point. The top would represent the sky above you, and the bottom, the ground. But on a globe model, you would not explain it the way you just did. You would, everybody on a call ain't wrong and just you right, brother. 
We showing you how your model go, man. Everything falls inward. The way you're explaining it is that everything fall down below the equator and rise up above it. But that's the way flat earth work. Everything that's heavy below this line, it falls into the ground, into the great deep. And everything that's uh, light above it becomes a gaseous stuff in the atmosphere, all the layers of the atmosphere. That's our model. We can clearly say, hey, at this equator line on a flat earth, this is the bottom, represents the bottom, and then this is the top. Only if I was a globalist, I wouldn't do that. Let me explain you how it, I see it. It ain't like, no how, how I, I see, see it, it like, but look, it ain't how I see it, you see it, or nothing. It's you learning your model if you want to debate it. That's all. Go ahead, man. You can't make up your um, own shit, Yeah, I, got, I, got, I, got, I know my model to the T, but check it out, right? All right, when I say the top, right, I'm talking about what we consider is uh, Alaska and things like that. The south, the bottom would be Antarctica and stuff like that. The front of the earth would be where you see where Central Africa is at, and the back is where but they say um, the earth is more percentage of water when we look at the globe model. Everything I'm saying is according to the globe model, you know, and that's what I'm saying. Alaska is at the top, I, and Antarctica is Arch at the bottom. Um, but the face of the percentage of the face of the earth is in the front, and um, I forgot how much percentage of the back of the earth, which is the back, is, is pretty much all water. Don't take no offense to this, Madon. But the whole while you was talking, I was making a sandwich, man. And I'm about to finish making. I don't want to hear what you. Only thing you should have said was peace. Appreciate that, God. I'm going to put that in my arsenal. All that hogwash you just said was neither here nor there, dog. I gave you some jewels. Just take the shit, bro. Damn. Go ahead, y'all. If you go to NASA's website, um, they have a, a model that they use to calculate flight path. And... In the summary, it tells you exactly that this summary documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. The derivation makes no assumption of reference uh, to trajectory or vehicle symmetry. Uh, the linear system equations are, anyway, it goes on to the math part. But the point is, if it was a globe Earth, there's no way they would be calculating a flight path on a flat, non-rotating Earth. And this is in their summary. So check this out, right? When you look at this model right here, this is what our Earth is. This the shit I was fascinated with What I was saying, look, this is what we need to be building about, man. This the secrets of this shit right here. Check this out. You see this pattern right here? That's what we took. Remember in that movie when the fucking city flipped over on each other like this and made this pattern? What movie was that? I think Interstellar, too, had that scene where the uh, whole reality roll up and flip around like this. This is what I'm showing you. Yeah, yeah, Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio? Yeah, man. This is what we're looking at. This mirage that happens at the horizon. See, because this is how the ethers are created. That's what I kept showing with these images right here. In this image, what the Hindu was saying. The Hindu universe right here is no different than this shit. Y'all see it? The how it's a flip side and upside like that connected together. That's what they saying. If you look at the little space in between them and you'll get that sound wave form. Like if I show you a wave, sound wave, watch this. When you see this pattern right here, you know this is like the core of an apple. This the skeleton. And the meat grows off of this. That's what you are. You're a waveform. Everything around that waveform becomes your body, your, your emanation, your, your manifestation. But here's, if you look at this, both of these worlds together creates a waveform in the middle, just like I'm showing you here. So the negative space on this image would be a bunch of skyscrapers, right? This our whole, so let me show you something. Our holographic simulation. At that line, we create an upside down. 
and and together they make this wave form, this this wave of life as they call it. And when the sun and moon is oscillating through these waves, guess what's happening? They're reading it like a CD disc, and that's how we're actually experiencing life. We're the vibration on a record. That's what I'm telling y'all. This this goes back to the video about sound, vibration, the knowledge of the universe and all this stuff. Also reflection, refraction. And when you look at it, it's a sound wave. So all, what's happening is you got a universe below, which is represented by these white skyscrapers down here, reflecting itself above, just like we see here. You see, you see this universe down here reflecting itself up there. And because of that, the space they create in the middle is that wave of life. You see, you see both worlds reflect. This is what's going on. So this song will echo throughout infinity and each echo of this universe becomes a para its own parallel universe. Oh, I do. Um, I want to say thank you for, you know, letting us have this type of discussion on your platform. So what about entrapment? When you look at, because I see what you're saying about positive and negative, up and down. But I'm looking at that space in between. Like, what is your idea of being trapped in between both realms or both universes? Since we have such interference, such as technology, probably disrupting the harmony and, you know, discourse of whatever's supposed to take place naturally. You get what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, I would just say this. I would say to the idea of being trapped in between the two, um, I would just say it's, it's like we're trapped inside of them all on some multiverse parallel universe. Because once you, like you said, a concept of being trapped inside is this, you're right. At, at, at this base universe, you would be enclosed in this sort of, projection cube let me show you what i'm saying right this is how holography work right uh holographic projection right what happened is this you would have a base like you see this is a fake version of this dude the way a hologram work he can project himself in a billion different places at one time but each of them copies is coming from the one source projection. Now that one source projection is often enclosed in a pod, some sort of cubicle uh, technology. I'll show you what I'm talking about because they making it today. It's all in the matrix too, just like this. It's like a the black cube, a pod. It looked like he wearing a graduation hat. You go inside of like an incubator type deal. And then you project yourself from inside that incubator to everybody else who got at one of these incubators, like in their living room. Then that person, like this is how it's going to be in the future instead of like you having a home phone. If I call you, my hologram will pop up. But the, the first versions of them is you got to literally walk inside of yours and project yourself. If, if just say everybody in the world got one of these boxes. When you walk inside of your box at your house, you can project your hologram to everybody on Earth, Earth, but you got to be in that base pod, that base. So that's what you mean. Like we are enclosed in a cubicle type. That's what the Merkaba field is. But that field expands outward to infinity. And that's how we're projected from the center of the field outward into all the multiple reflected and reflected universes. From the middle one, just like this. When we leave the center universe, we leave the multiverse. Getting inside of this pod projects you into it, all of the multiverse. That's why when we get out of this cube, we leave the Pan's Labyrinth. This whole mirror house projection shit got us not knowing which one the real one. That's what this simulation is. If you look at the base of the light bulb, that's the Earth. That spiral that you see down there, that's what the earth is. Let me pull this up. It's flat circles, right? And uh, what's happening there is this spiraling here. 
And this is where the Hindu said at the base of the Tesla tower is these ca this calling motion. You see at the bottom, the electric contact, the foot. That's why they said the earth is God's footstool. Now, uh, around, this, around this little spiral right here, our firmament dome starts to form. That's what this glass is, the firmament dome above our flat earth circles. In the middle of it is the great mother holding it all up, or the God shoe, what you call in the, gla the glass support, the contact wire to the base. Let's pull that up real quick. Yeah, this was to answer yeah. the person's so, question who was asking about how fire could be in a bubble. This would be an example. So thank you for the uh, presentation. Oh, yeah. I thank you for the, the uh, intelligent questions. Um, yeah, this, this is dope that you made that connection because... Like the earth is like the home base ground zero down here. But the even, oh, matter of fact, this make me think of something. The Hindu Naga, Hindu Nagini, showing you this same thing too. See, he, his highest point is, is the Naga. And then it start to fade up at the base. He's a pyramid. And he's a, the highest point of this pyramid is his head. Then it start going down here from there. He's basically making, he's, it, this is what's going on. When you see his legs wrapped around, see, if you think about this, right? Our, uh, his legs wrapped around like that represent this whole chakra layering system. Let me show you something real quick, and I'm going to pass the mic. We're basically a walking light bulb. Let me show you this. See, because... This, this whole layering pattern or calling up, you see right here how we got this, the, all of these little chakra layers, these, these other layers around us. That's what I'm saying about these, uh, the copper cores. Let's go down there. If you look at this, it, this was going on. Remember the God Beelzebub? They got the word bulb right in his name. Now look at the base of that. And then you will see your pineal gland is where the light is shining at in the middle of your brain. That would be this, this fire in the middle of the light bulb. You see it? And when you cut this light on, there's a fire in the middle of this that's, that's going to make these wires turn red right here. That fire in the middle of the bulb, let me show you what that is. Right here. That... In between your left and right brain, this is what's going on. That, that's, the, that's the pineal gland. And your brain is this one big bulb split by the glass support, the contact wire to the base, which is what? The, the body. This whole brain and all that screwed into the fucking body is its own bulb, which is why we even got this uh, image right here. When your subconscious mind is filled with um, a bunch of negativity and um, a host of other um, different vibrations and uh, different um, thoughts, um, your your conscious mind is um, is kind of diluted and it, it gives itself a false reality, um, seeming that it's real. Because I think a lot of people dealt with fear uh, through the ages, and that's why they cause war, bloodshed, because they wanted to keep those top in those high positions. So I think uh, the subconscious mind um, is the same as the as above, so below. If your subconscious mind perceives in wicked, evil thoughts, your conscious mind is going to um, act on them and vice versa. You know, we say stuff, we say we're screwed, right? Let me show you something like when you when somebody be like, we're fucked, we're screwed, coming to this earth, right? Is like, think of this light bulb like a fucking um, hot air balloon, right? Think of that light bulb like, like a hot air balloon. And you're fucked because you got, you got anchored to the earth. You got screwed. You got screwed into the inferno. And now each incarnation is screwing you out. It's so that the light bulb is rising out of the socket every time, when every degree we unscrew it is getting closer to loosening itself. That loosening is what we call in liberation, escaping from the matrix. When the light bulb fully unscrew itself, 
the wires that was wrapping it into this world becomes the tail that it drags along as a new sperm cell to go screw into another whole paradigm. This light bulb becomes that sperm cell with the tail once it uncaused, untethers itself from this. You see what's going on here? That's like using this concept to explain incarnation death of a light bulb is a good idea. Uh, an old school term for sex was also screwing also bringing the life into this world. So that's a great connection. Yep. And then also the um, symbol that I was trying to show you is it looks like an arrow, like a Cupid's arrow. It's like it's got uh, some lines at the top. How, how many? It's got like two um, lines going through it at the top, almost like the Duce liquor at the top, the little um, two lines at the top. Yeah. And at the bottom is a, um, a heart. And so when you think about that, too, it's almost like the, the arrow was going into something like you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. And the cycles in the circles of time. Um, that's what the um, ancients dealt with. They understood you the cycles put, of it's time. It's the merchant mark. It's the merchant mark. It, it, it was on the window. It was on painted glass. That's what I was looking at, a book on painted glass. Those yep, little, yep. at the end of the line, they also, the little tails that you was talking about, Sanchez, you know how you uh -huh. talk about the uh, the Pisces and if, if Jesus was a, um, was a fish, like those little uh, things at the end. Yeah, because when you talk, like the same thing. when you talk about this fish God, right, if you think of a fish bone, that's what we basically looking at, a fish bone pointed up with like one of these right here is what we looking at standing up where they go to tail, they go to bot, that's the fish guard still. But see, that's that Tesla oscillator. And I was just about to say that too, uh, too, Sanchez, with the oscillator, that's the that's the onk right there, my brother. That's the onk right there with the oscillator in the middle, with the whole pattern in the middle. Well, you gotta realize a lot of these people were into in what we call engraving images. Yeah, um, and because the, the, these, these merchants are the ones that came to the earth teaching us money, bargaining, consumerism, and war energy. These merchants are Martians from this red motherfucking root chakra realm down here in she Sheol and shit. That's the energy they got. Buy and sell, give and take versus a world above where everything got reciprocal energy and shit. This is just, I'm, I'm going to reach here. Like these words we use like merchant, I'm I'm going with the etymology. When you talk about the uh, original merchants of the earth, this were the, the Hebrew and shit, the Egyptians. People said they were Martians. People said they were Lemurians, Moors, Mauritian laws, merchant laws of the sea, shit like that. But the thing is, uh, yeah, there are dual energies on this earth. We went over that earlier. Some of them are mechanical spirits. Some of us are natural spirits. All in all, that's the whole war that's playing out in this motherfucker. Yeah, that's the swastika too, if you see here. But what this showing is like for every action we take in one world, there's a layered world that's manifesting that same energy in an alternate way, in an alternate universe. So like here, you got a bunch of men stacked. Some are in front of each and some are behind them. They making a, a whole stack of different men. And as one man do one move, one behind them do it. They call it line dancing, sequence dancing too. But this show you how like, while you doing something in this universe, this same action is translated to another action in another universe to where it's the same energy and same time stamp, same action, but it's altered to be something different. So that's how you get like Mon Cali right here too, with like how she's saying that you're multidimensional. She got a set of hands in one world taking the action and she got these different, it's layered on each other like this right here. But e each world is its own shape. And but it's all represent 360. So right here you got a square and a circle to show that concept. One of the men's are in the circle, one of the men's are in the square. But when we put the square in the circle, both of the men's become layered over each other, and all of these parallel universes become connected. Because each of these parallel universes is their own cymatic waveform. Let me pull it up. Each of these waveforms is the 360. Each one is the 360. 
but they all expressing it different in a square, in a circle, in a diamond. Long as it equal out to 360 and there's more than one way to skin a cat, it's an infinite amount of ways to reach that 360. And so in each of these infinite universes, which is a 360 degree degrees, each one is expressing that 360 in its own way. And they all layer over each other like this right here. And then that's how you get a version of you that's in the square universe and a version of you in the circle universe, a version of you in the diamond universe. All of these shapes become layered and the shape and all and what they make as one divine shape become the universe. When all these shapes come together as one, they make this macabre, this this whole little spike ball. Because what'll happen, right? If you take every shape in the universe and layer it over each other, guess what you'll create? You'll be left with something like this. Because you'll have coming from a singularity a bunch of shit. It'll be a hollow point in the middle, right? Think about what I'm saying. Because every shape got a hollow core. It'll be a hollow point in the middle, right? But at the edges, because every shape is, is filling in all the angles around the edges, because if you think about it right here, you got a square and a circle, but that leaves some empty spot right here to be filled in. It's another shape that's going to fill that in, and then it's another shape going to fill. And before you know it, all around the edges just going to be spiky. The crown of thorns. All them shapes stacked together just going to create an outside perimeter of like a spike ball. And that's the whole symbol of God or like Polaris, this star explosion. Or this whole Big Bang symbol, that spike ball. That's what I'm talking about. That's what it, it, that's what it all looked like, this right here. When you zoom out of all this shit, this is what it's going to be. The Big Bang is simple. If you see what I'm saying, in the middle of this is an empty chamber because all these shapes start from an empty chamber. And then they got the, the angles represented on the edges. So because of that, you will have this shape that's like the flower of life to where all around that hollow, that hollow middle will be just spikes. That's what the flower of life showing you. All of the shapes in the universe stacked together on a central axis. And then what you will get, here's a good example here too. And you can keep filling this up. You can have a Vitruvian man back here with his hands going up here. And some going up here and up here. I want to get some Hebrews in the future that want to debate me about what Moses' teachings was because Moses went a Christian. And I, and I want to show them the symbols of Moses to show what he was teaching about ascension right here. Yeah, well, um, you know, I beg to differ on that Moses. Um, um, well, from my point of view, what Moses was doing, um, he was, he was showing time? that the magic that the Egyptians was doing, the most High gave him the power, well, he can do that too. So he was just showing them that, okay, this is what y'all worship in Egypt. Okay. This is what y'all like. I can do it. Okay, so doesn't your Bible say Moses was learned in all the way of the Egyptian? Yeah, but before okay, he Okay, I don't want to know nothing was... else. I just wanted to know that part. Didn't it say that? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Okay, so it's, no, it's not all that what you just said. You're wrong. It's the fact that Moses was an Egyptian. He learned everything that he learned from the Egyptians and turned on them to go lead his own crowd and make his own following and build his own land of milk and honey. And what the, the question then is, what did he learn from the Egyptians? And what he learned from the Egyptians was the science of that Uraeus that's coming up out of the crown, this Kundalini. This explains why all of the pharaohs had a serpent emerging up out of the crown. That's what uh, uh, Moses learned from the Egyptians. You can't debate that. You want to tell you why you can't debate that? Because everybody know that the knowledge of ascension and going out of the body goes back to Egypt and the pharaohs who were seeking immortality. They started this whole religion of the dead getting up and walking 
and, and resurrecting and shit and trying to get the knowledge of that. So that's what Moses learned. And Moses went on to teach that shit. Moses said, what I need y'all for? I got all the knowledge now. I can go. And Moses gave birth to the, the Abrahamic faiths. You got the Egyptian faiths that still practice this shit under the Eastern world. Then you got the Western world, Abrahamic faiths. That's all due to the forefathers under Moses and Abraham. These are the ones that learned in Egypt and went and spread this to the Western world. They've spread it Freemasonry. They, even, even in America, you see the pyramid on the dollar with the all saying, I, yeah, it's all inspired by Egypt, man. Yeah, I'm just going to say this. Well, we got to remember, um, before Moses uh, went into the wilderness and raised that staff and things like this, um, remember, um, he was uh, the most high was giving him visions and things like that. So he that's why he confronted Pharaoh and, and tried to warn Pharaoh of, of different things. Of, what of they this got nature. to do with anything so I was saying. Gave, well, I'm just saying, according to the narrative, the biblical narrative, the most high gave, even though Moses, even though he was learning the ways of the Egyptians, the most high gave him power to defeat yeah, but the Egyptians. The, but, but, but I'm telling you, what, 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 what you're doing is bringing up a whole nother subject and mm -hmm. argument and moving the goalposts. None of that got to do with none I just said. Only thing I said was Moses was a wise man and he get his wisdom from the Egyptians. You just said, well, he get his power from God. That's all that just happened. I said I proved and showed and proved that Moses get his knowledge from the Egyptians, his wisdom from the Egyptians. And you said, okay. yeah, so I just proved that Moses, right, got his wisdom from the Egyptians. And all you did, Madan, was say that he get his power from God. I got through just showing not Moses' wisdom, what made him a wise man, where he learned from was the Egyptians. Your rebuttal was the Most High had gave Moses some power and all that shit. You saying his power come from God, I'm saying his wisdom come from Egypt, his knowledge come from Egypt. Knowledge is power. Wherever he get his knowledge from, that's where his power come from. I'm using science and facts and everything they say about Moses. And I'm talking about wisdom. And I'm talking about the first universities on the earth that would have made him a wise man. You coming with the spiritual myth of like, well, God and the most high and all that dry chicken ass talk. Man, I'm hungry, man. Set up the debate, man. You holding me up for my damn dinner. You don't want no damn smoke, man. This is nonsense. I'm nah, I want all you, the smoke. You, you, what you, I'm telling you, you is your that. damn answer is nothing but but the Most High had already empowered Moses to defeat the Egyptians. I don't care about none of that. I'm talking about who taught the man, who gave him the wisdom to lead this crowd up out of Egypt, who gave Satan uh, the Most High. The, who who gave him who gave no, that ain't what your Bible say though. Your Bible say he got the wisdom from the Egyptians. That's why I don't want to talk to you no more, man. You holding me up from my dinner with stupidity. Let it go, bro. You're lost and you're wrong. Yo, Bob, uh, nope, nope, that? nope, nope. You're done. You lost that one. You're wrong. I'm finna go eat now. If you want to reschedule the debate, email me. No more nonsense from you. Because you don't want to go with what your Bible's saying. <laughs>